Uh, thank you, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Ahead of the Game, Field Hockey Canada's webinar series. So thanks very much for joining. Uh, hopefully everyone was able to enjoy last week's session featuring Hugh Purvis. If you haven't seen it yet, it's archived on our website at the Ahead of the Game page. Um, you can find it under the News tab on the left-hand side. So uh, Today we're featuring Women's Next Gen Director Patrick Shachani to talk about goal scoring inside the nine yard. So thanks again for joining us. Just a few logistical notes. Um, we have everyone muted for now and we'll have everyone muted for the duration and everyone's uh, video off as well. So everyone can focus on Patrick and his uh, presentation. So uh, if you wanna ask some questions, you're absolutely welcome to at any point, uh, please post them in the Zoom chat group. Um, you can either post them publicly and I'll grab them and feed them to Patrick throughout the presentation, or uh, you can send them privately to me in the, in the Zoom chat box as well. Um, yeah, so he'll take a few breaks to answer a couple questions along the way, so you don't have to save all your questions till the end. But of course, at the end, we'll have some more open uh, Q&A as well. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Patrick, and uh, thanks very much for, for joining. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Patrick Ciccioni, and it's uh, great to, uh, to bring you this webinar. Uh, so... We'll be discussing some nine yard uh, play. Uh, just a little bit about myself uh, in terms of where I come from. Uh, I come from South Africa uh, in a small little town uh, called Lady Grey. Uh, basically known for its uh, beautiful mountains, uh, lots of hiking. Uh, and then I moved from there, moved to Johannesburg. And that's where I did, uh, did my schooling in that. Uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I played uh, cricket at school, played soccer, I was very involved in athletics and cross country. And then I've put hockey here as the last point here because I think that's definitely taken me to all parts of the world, you know, and I never really, to be honest, I never really enjoyed hockey. I never knew about it until, until a very good friend of mine said, hey, just uh, try it out and uh, try it out and... Uh, and the rest is, is, is history. I mean, I think I've, I've uh, traveled, traveled the world through hockey and seen different places. So if we take a little look in terms of my coaching career, uh, I studied at the University of Johannesburg and then uh, got my degree, my honors degree in biomechanics, which is kinesiology uh, and biomechanics. And then also started coaching at the University of Johannesburg. And then once I moved from the University of Johannesburg, I then progressed into our provincial program, which, which was uh, the Southern Khateng Hockey Association. Through here, I had the opportunity of coaching uh, the U18 girls and also the U21, U21 provincial teams. And then from progressing from the, the Southern Khateng Hockey Association, I then moved on to the South African schools hockey. Okay, and this is where I was uh, given the opportunity to coach the junior U16, the junior U18, U18 girls, and then from here progressed into SAHA, which is the South African Hockey Association, and that's where I uh, I was afforded the opportunity to to work with the women's national team, but also coached the under 21 uh, national team as well. Uh, had a lot of good times, uh, learned a lot through this process, and then moved across to to Hong Kong, where I worked at at a club. Uh, called Valley, and then also worked at uh, the Hong Kong Hockey Association uh, and spent some good, some good times there as well. And then through my journey, I've then now find myself with Field Hockey Canada, and it's an exciting journey ahead. If we take it back a little bit through my journey, and I've, uh, I've kind of put some... Uh, some key moments that I think, or key tournaments that I think that have definitely shaped me as an individual and as a coach. And uh, if, if, we, if we go through the timeline here, if we look at the Junior World Cup in Boston, I had the privilege of being involved, uh, the Junior World Cup in München Gladbahn, uh, Commonwealth Games, uh, Nanjing Youth Olympic Games, uh, the Junior World Cup in, Sant uh, in, in Santiago. These are all U21 events. Um, and then I was involved with the Asian Games with the senior team, Hong Kong team, and then had the pleasure of working with the women's national team at the Pan American Games in 2019. 
so when I look at this, when I when I when I look at this, uh, it's def it's definitely uh, forged me in the right direction, and also lots of growth has have hap has happened through this journey. So when I look at that, for me it says to me that there are no shortcuts to building a team each season. So you build the foundation brick by brick, and this is how I see my journey. I see I see my journey as being built through each through each season or through each cycle uh, that I've been involved in. So when I look at this, for me, the key, the key to success is never stop learning. Okay? Keep investing in yourself to be better. Okay? If I keep investing in myself to be better, it means that I give the opportunity to the people that I work with and to the athletes that we work with for them to be better as well. So if we look at hockey in terms of uh, where the game is at right now, I think international hockey is being played at a high intensity, okay, with the small details making a massive impact on results. Okay, so it's the small details that make a massive impact in the, in, 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 in the final result. And my topic today is about nine yard scoring. Okay, so for me, goal scoring is an art. Okay, I think it's, it's very important that uh, we have the ability to score goals. Okay, and when I look at hockey as a whole, we talk about attacking principles and we also talk about defensive principles. But for the purpose of this, this topic, we will look at more on the attacking principles. So you'll see this, um, this diagram. Okay, it was created by a guy by the name of Sam Rowe. Uh, he did a study on uh, the World Cup, the Men's World Cup in 2018. And uh, he, broke, he broke down the field in terms of the different areas uh, in the circle. So he spoke about the circle left, the center, center left, center right, baseline right, baseline left, and then the nine yard box. So when we talk about the principles for me, the details that we're currently working on, and if I look at uh, the nine yard for us, we talk about the give and go, okay, getting ahead of the ball. Okay, key things, we talk about connections. So connections for us is the ability to pass a ball, but also the ability to receive a ball, okay, with high speeds. Then this is also related to the skill choice and the, and the decision, okay, what type of passing skill are you using? Okay, for instance, are you lifting the ball? Are you playing a backhand pass? Uh, and then also, what type of scoring skill are you using? Is it an upright backhand? Okay, is it, is, is, is it a, you guys call it either a tomahawk or you're playing the flats. Okay, we also talk about bisect pass lines. Okay, and I'll, I'll explain this as we go along in the presentation. We also talk about left foot pass. Okay, so how do we create numbers from a one versus one into a two versus one situation? Okay, and then also we, we talk about trust. Okay, when we, play, when, we, when we talk about these principles, okay, do I trust my teammate to pass a ball to me? Okay, am I available? Trust me. Okay, play me. We talk about uh, low body position, okay, in these areas. And we also talk about leading. Okay, we talk about leading either late, okay, we talk about leading in front of a defender, we talk about uh, leading behind a defender, and then also we talk a lot about look vertical so for me when we talk about look, look vertical it's in terms of see the field look long first if you can play the ball long first then play it if it's not on but you still looked you still pre-scanned and then we still have passing options going forward if they're on so we're always searching for outcomes that's key for us those are our principles so we're always searching for outcomes positive outcomes that we want to we want to get out So if I, if, if I start to uh, elaborate a bit more in terms of the nine yard and the, and the techniques, so you'll see in this picture over here, this is a goal scoring technique with hands slightly apart. Okay, hands, her hands are slightly apart in the nine yard zone. Okay, if we move on to the next slide, hands are apart. We also look at the low body position, okay, and also the, 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 the skill set used to score. If we look at this slide over here, Hands together, look at the type of skill, head over the ball, she's created her own space. The ball is slightly behind her, okay? So we call this backspace shooting with an, with, with an upright backhand. 
So for me, when I look at this, for me, technique is a skill. And we should be coaching technique. Technique is a skill. Looking at technique again, so when we talk about choice and situational awareness, uh, it's critical to understand what environment, where are you on the field, okay, and what are you looking to do to the opposition. In this case, what is a striker looking to do against the goalkeeper? So if you look at this picture, we talk about open stick face uh, to lift the ball over the goalkeeper. Okay, and why, and, and why does she choose this skill? Because she knows what the goalkeeper is trying to do. And what triggers are those? The keeper collapses her right knee. So when the keeper collapses her right knee, it means that her, her right shoulder is susceptible, is susceptible to, to the ball being played in the air there. We also look at her body position, okay, nice and low. We'll look at the hands. And then we'll look at the technique. Open face to lift the ball above the keeper. Okay, this is, a, this is about situational awareness. When we look at bringing the ball into the nine yard again, it's critical that we address the techniques of how we're gonna bring the ball into that nine yard. Okay, and for me again, we talk about technique. Technique is a skill. So we, we look at footwork, we look at hand positioning. Okay, all these phases that are used to make sure that we can address technique and we can also bring the ball and we can execute our passes we can connect our passes and we can trust the individuals that the individuals will receive those balls okay that is critical for us so when we look at technique look at the hands hands together we call it a long a long handle hit okay head over the ball foot parallel to the ball okay slight slight criticism maybe she can bend her left knee slightly Okay, but again, we want to make sure that we execute, we execute, execute the pass. Again, so now when we execute the pass, we talk about low body position. Okay, we, we spoke about lead in front, lead late, to also then redirect, redirect the ball into the score, into, into the goal. So when we look when we look when we look back at the nine yard, for me the nine yard is a box. Okay, it's an area or a zone which is normally congested, okay, with defenders in there. Okay, and it's critical in terms of how the attack the attackers are looking to manipulate the space to make sure that it's easy to for them to score a goal in this zone or how for them to make a goal in this zone. Okay. So when we when we look at this for me. And I might ask you a question. What do you think the percentages are in terms of goals scored in the different zones? And this was based on the Men's World Cup. So if you, if you, if you think back on the Men's World Cup, uh, I'd like you to do a quick exercise for me and uh, predict what the percentages would be or what the percentages were at the Men's World Cup in terms of scoring opportunities uh, from the left baseline, from the center left, from the center right, from the baseline right, and from the nine yard. So I'll just give you a, a few seconds to, uh, to uh, get those numbers, and then I'll proceed. Okay, so let's move forward. So let's see what the percentages were at the World Cup uh, in terms of goal scoring. So if I, if I look at the stats, if I give you the stats, uh, there were 157 goals scored at the Men's World Cup okay, in 2018, 96 field goals, 65 penalty corners, okay, and, nine, and nine penalty strokes. So 6%. On, on either on either baseline, thirteen percent on the center left, twenty two percent 
in the center right. And 53% of the goals were scored in this nine yard. Okay, so it tells you current trends. If you look at it, a lot of goals are scored in the nine yard. Okay, so it's critical when we, talk, when we look back at the techniques, okay, to bring the ball into the nine yard. So technique is a skill. Technique is a skill. Okay, so, so when we look at this now, key principles, body position, body position in the nine yard. How are we executing it? What are we looking to do? Situational awareness. Talk about connections. Talk about receive. We want to connect. We want to execute. Body preparation. Low body position. Redirect. In the nine yard. Look at the second post. Look at the individual diving there on the second post. Trying to get into this area. Nice and low. Situational awareness. No, def no defender behind. I know where the goals are. Upright backhand finish. Type of lead. We look at an S-shaped lead. I lead him behind. I re-lead. Awareness of the goals. I know where the goals are. Okay. And then an upright backhand. Ball played into the nine yard. Touch. To lift over the keeper. Strong left hand. Awareness, what is the keeper going to do? How do I get the ball over the keeper? Again, speed of thought will lead to speed of action. To get the ball over the keeper. If we proceed now, and uh, this was work done in, in 2017. So if we look at ball carrying position, and, we spoke, and we've spoken a little bit about uh, the quality of balls played into the, into the nine yard. Okay, so now we start to look at principles. Okay, how we bring the ball into the nine yard. So it's critical that the ball carrier, the head up, the head must be up. Okay, so they're always searching. So they're looking vertical. They're searching for that pass. We spoke about uh, strikers in these zones. Okay, about leading late. Leading late to get in front of their defenders. Okay. And at the end of the day, this player must make the decision in terms of do I either pass, pass the left foot, okay, which is the most dangerous pass, okay, or do I play the ball across the circle? Is there a connection between the two? And if there's a connection, trust that connection and then execute the pass and execute the lead. And once I've led to the ball and there's a connection, what type of skill set am I using? Okay, am I redirecting the ball? Or am I, am I having to receive the ball? What type of pressure is on me? Okay, because that will also determine what type of skill that you need to use in this area. So if we play the clip, Yeah, I'll take it back. So key principles. Ball gets transferred. Key principles, have a look. Look at the type of lead. 
Okay, we want to make sure that we're always creating a problem for the defender. How do I create a problem for the defender? I lead him behind. Okay, I lead him behind. There should be some movement. There's either a double lead. I lead away. Striker leads away. And as soon as there's daylight, it becomes very difficult for the defender because the defender now has to focus on the ball, but also has to focus on you as well. And now the timing of the lead and the connection of the lead to make sure that you can make a goal. These are small details, but have a massive impact on the end result. So timing of lead, okay, quality of the pass, create a problem for the defender. So if we look at the next slide. Okay, and I'll take you back. Key concepts. We talk about speed of thought, okay, will lead to speed of action, okay, and also transition. So transition for us is transition once we win the ball, what is the next phase for us to then go forward, okay, and how are you going to go forward? What is your speed of thought? So your speed of thought, okay, must equal your speed of action. We talk about connect, open, receive, head up, okay, choice of passing, okay, and what is the decision making now? Okay, what type of pass do I make in this instance? Okay, also for the players that are leading, it's critical that you time your lead. What is your body position? Okay, what is the choice of skill that you're looking to execute? Low body position, hands apart in front of the defender. And it's a late lead. Next clip. Looking for a connection. Pass off the right foot. So if we elaborate on this, Type of receive, decision making, okay. Yes, there's pressure, okay, that's coming. But again, the decision making is you're looking for a connection, okay, who's available, okay, how can we make the goal here, okay, and the quality of pass that is required to make sure that we can make this goal. Again, Choice of passing skill. We talk about bisect the pass line. 
there's a pass line. So if you had to draw a line between this defender's left foot and, the, and this defender's right foot, that is a pass line. Okay, so we're not passing through defenders. We're not passing through defenders. Yeah, we're bisecting defenders. We're bisecting the pass line. That is critical. We're bisecting the pass line. And also, for me, this is key, the choice of passing skill. The choice of passing skill. So if we move us forward now, receive, critical now, we're looking for a connection. This moment is key because the, the attacker's got her head down. She's already made that connection. So it's important for the attacker that's on the, on the, on the second post that she does not relead because this attacker is now committed in, in, in executing a pass, her head is down because she wants to focus on the ball to make sure that she can execute her pass 100%. It's critical that there's a, this connection is already established with the second player on the post, so she must not relead. Also, the pass off the right foot. Okay, that's a skill, it's a technique. Remember, we said technique is a skill. Passing off the right foot, and it's also a lifted pass, a lifted pass between two players. Low body position, watch the ball onto your stick, low body position, and the type of skill, just a bant, call it a bant, hands apart, watch the ball, don't focus on the goals, watch the ball first, and then celebrate afterwards. Next slide, so it's the same, same uh, clip, but just from a different uh, view from the top. Identify the pass line. Choice of skill. Okay, so if we take this back. So we talk about applied pressure. Once the ball is won, what are our attacking principles? Okay, we want to identify the pass line. We want to connect. Okay, we want to get, give, go, or give and go. Okay, again, decision-making, speed of thought. Okay, we'll increase the speed of action. Okay, so speed of thought equals speed of action. Thank you. 
Okay, transition. Okay, now identify the pass line. Pass line. Possible. Go. Connect. One post. Second post. Choice of skill. Again, execute the skill. Execute the skill. Execute the skill. Yeah, so if we look at the lead, relead, and manipulate defenders to then create a connection. Okay, this is the next phase. And I think this is critical in terms of leading a lead towards the ball and players don't receive that pass. It's critical then to relead a game. Okay, to relead to then open up space in a different area or in a different zone to make sure that you can receive the ball. And take us back. Timing of the lead. Lead too early, so timing of the lead. Relead. Okay, relead to make a better passing option or to be a, a passing option. Quality of pass. Okay, what type of skill pass or what type of skill set? Am I gonna pass here? Okay, this is a forehand pass. And in the nine yard. Okay, I see there's a question that's come through, uh, which is what do you think is the most important skill that the best goal that the best scorers possess specify in the nine yard i think if you look in the nine yard the best strikers the best strikers in the nine yard are the strikers that are able to create space for themselves in the nine yard so create space means move and relead uh, and also again it's based on situational awareness what is the opposition doing to me okay because that'll determine what type of skill set that i need to use in the nine yard okay so I think it's important it's important for strikers and midfielders that you must have a range of skills um, in the nine yard or in the circle to make sure that you can put the opposition under pressure or the goalkeeper under pressure by making sure that you, you have the ability to score goals. Okay, I don't want to say that you, you only need a backhand to be a good striker. You you must have a backhand and you must be able to hit the ball on the forehand. You must also be able to deflect the ball uh, off your left hand. You must also be able to deflect uh, the ball uh, on your forehand as well. So it's, 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 a, it's a set of skills that you need to possess, okay? But also you need to have the understanding of what type of skill set do you need in that specific moment? Because you must also realize every moment is different in the circle, okay? In hockey, every moment is different, but it's the decision-making, also the speed of thought will also lead to the speed of action. Yeah, so we talk about situational awareness. Okay, I think this will also tie in to the, to the question. Okay, it depends on what the goalkeeper is doing or it also depends on what the opposition is doing to you. Okay, so we look at movement. Again, it's about decision-making, timing of lead, and choice of skill. Choice of skill.
So if I take this back slightly, and I'll take it from here, timing of lead, decision making, and the skill set. In this instance, if we look at this, hands together on the stick, open stick face, okay, Situa situational awareness. I want to lift the ball above the goalkeeper because I know the goalkeeper is going to come out, okay, and she might collapse, okay. To then get the ball over the goalkeeper in the nine yard. Again, this is based on situa situational awareness and the thought process, and then you need to make sure that you can execute that. I see another question has come through. Are there some specific movements or patterns uh, to have players open or to open up pass lines, or is it entirely dependent on team strategy? Okay, so I think it's important that, uh, yes, some teams will have strategy. Okay, and it's important to understand when I say teams will have strategy, some teams, for instance, defending teams might defend zonally in a, in, in a circle, so which means that they're not man to man, they're trying to cover space. So then it's important that what your team strategy would be, would be in terms of how do we manipulate the space? So what type of leads are we making? So there'd be more movement specific. Uh, also, sometimes it might be some teams might mark man to man. Okay, so then again, it depends on what type of movements you're looking to make. You might have to make short, shorter leads per se. Okay, or you might have to make big leads. So it all depends on uh, how teams are marking you in the circle. Okay, and it also depends on your on your team strategy uh, in terms of how uh, how you want to execute and get the ball into the nine yard. So, for instance, for if if we were playing against a team that was was zonal in the circle, for us we would try stress the field, stress the field. Again, we talk about pass lines, so movement in between those pass lines, uh, lots of movement in the pass lines, but again connected with the front three. Okay, in terms of leading with a purpose and not just leading for the sake of just leading. Okay, and it's critical that we, st we, we still have players in the nine yard. So I'll speed this up. So the next skill set, again, just getting ahead, but again, give and go, but also being ready for the rebound. And I'll take this back to the start. So being ready for the rebound. So if we start from the Beginning, the give and go principles, we want to get ahead. Connection two versus one. With this player, she continues her lead, so she's made an action, she's passed the ball, and now she looks to get ahead. So again, we talk about body position. So if you had to look at this, low, if you had to look at her upright, with the rebound. So we're gonna talk about consistent decision making. Okay, uh, with backspace shooting. Again, ball carrying position 
decision making, when do I make the pass, when do I connect? Decision making under pressure, choice of skill, where's the ball? Was the ball in front of me or was it slightly behind? To make an action. So if we take this back, So we look at the ball carrying position. How do we manipulate? With deception. Here's the deception. So she opens her right shoulder and then she pulls the ball back in towards her, back towards her left. With deception, she plays the ball into the nine yard on a reverse. Okay, two touches there to receive. So it's one touch into the space. Next touch is then uh, a backhand finish on goal. Here's the first touch. Okay, the ball slightly behind. And in this case, look at the hand positioning. Okay, hands are apart. Okay, but there's also a thought process that's now starting to happen. Okay, to make sure that she can execute her skill to the T. Next phase, look at the hands. Okay, from being apart to together, the ball is slightly behind. Okay, but she's still, she's still in a good position to play the upright uh, backhand from, 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 from a backspace shooting position. So looking at skill execution, again, we've spoken about this earlier, hand positioning, footwork, address the ball. How do we deliver the ball now into the nine yard? Key principles, we wanna make sure that we create okay, a problem for the defender. Okay, again, if there's daylight between here, it makes it very difficult for the defender to mark because the defender has to then focus on the ball carrier but also has to focus on you as well. So this makes it very difficult to make that connection. So as, as, as attackers, it's important to try to get away from your markers, okay? Stay in behind, okay? And there's the various leads that you're making. And then at the last instance, you wanna make sure that you're getting in front and you've made a good connection with the ball carrier. Because at the end of the day, this is the space that you want to find yourself in Okay, deflecting the ball on goal. So if we take it through, let's turn the volume down. Take it through, give and go, connect, hard pass into the nine yard, lead late, get in front. Create a problem for the defender, overtake, get in front, to create a goal. Again, it comes down to the skill set, to the quality of the pass there, the quality of the pass, and the connection with the, with the, with the, with the attacker that's made that lead. So if I take it slightly back. Again, if we look at the, the principles, if we talk about principles, the give and go, ball in, the defender follows the ball, give, go, ball gets received, address, late lead. Again, quality of the pass, look at overtake or get in front. Choice of skill to score, low body position, hands together, backhand deflection. Small details make a massive impact. Create a problem for the defender. 
because now the defender's focused on the ball. And as you get in front, it is very difficult to recover from that. And now you have a bite of the cherry. Again, so if we look at a similar clip, okay, again, it talks about the late lead. Again, we wanna make sure that we create a problem for the defender. Okay, but again, it's gonna come down to what type of skill set am I using? Okay, and what connection am I making with the player in the nine yard? Okay, and it's critical to have this player in the nine yard. If you don't have this player in the nine yard, you do not put their position under pressure. Okay, and their opposition are comfortable. Again, decision making, looking for a connection. Looking for a connection. Type of skill set and skill choice. Time your lead. Time your lead. Create a problem for the defender. Yeah, so if we, if we work through this, elimination, break in field. Okay, again, techniques of skill, break in field, straighten, and look to connect. Again, ball carrying position, ball carrying position, head up, decision making, looking for a connection, Okay, what skill set is required to make sure that we can complete and execute this task? Look at the hands from carrying the ball with hands apart to slapping the ball with hands together. Okay. Again, we want to make sure that the circle is big. Okay, we want to create space here. But again, we want to make sure that there's distance between the attacker and the defender to make sure it's very difficult for the defender to focus on the attacker, but also focusing on the ball. And it's also critical, the timing of the lead. Because now, as you see in this instance, the defender starts to go towards the the defender, she starts, to go into, she starts to go towards her goals and then the defender overtakes, the attacker overtakes, excuse me. So if we look at it in terms of hockey for me, I look at it in terms of hockey is based around principles. Okay. Uh, it's also based around attacking and defending principles. Okay. And, it's, and, it's, and I think it's, it's critical for us to make sure that uh, we try, we, we, we try keep this game as simple as possible. Uh, and when I say keep it as simple as possible, the key principles are when you're attacking, we want to make sure that we keep the ball. We keep the ball for long periods, but we're also moving it forward with purpose, okay? And looking at give and goes, looking, looking at connecting with our players, uh, making sure that we can get the ball into the nine yard. Once we've got the ball into the nine yard, we want to make sure that we get the ball on target, okay? We want to make sure that we, we, uh, we, we put pressure on the defenders, but we also put pressure on, 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 on the goalkeeper. I think for us, that is critical. That's how we want to make sure that we, we create goals. Okay, just before I move on to this other one, I see there's a question. Okay, it says in the clips you've shown, ball carrying with your head up is so important. 
what is what is a good way to encourage our young players uh, to do more of this? Any drill suggestions? Yeah, I think it's important, uh, and uh, and we emphasize this quite a bit in uh, in the in, in the programs. Uh, ball carrying position, okay, with head up, okay. In order, in order for us to get our head up, it's important because once we have our head up, we are able to make better decisions. Okay, better decisions uh, equal better passes. Okay, better passes equals uh, better outcomes. Okay, so it's it's critical for us to make sure that uh, we're getting players or athletes to look up once they're carrying the ball. But again, it's critical that our passing or our receiving skill is 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 at is at a high level. Okay, so our first touch needs to be at a high level. If our first touch is at a high level, we can carry the ball, we can receive, carry the ball now without having to focus, oh, my first touch is poor, the ball's bounced off uh, my stick, I'm now having to try to uh, regain possession, and now I'm under pressure. Okay, so, and this, is, this goes back to the question of, hockey's a simple game and we want to keep it simple, okay, but we want to make sure that we are able to pass and receive. Okay, and through the different levels, we want to make sure we're passing at high speed, and we are we are able to receive we are able to receive passes, uh, and then that will also bring in the principles of looking up. Okay, we want to make sure that we can look up, because too many times if we don't look up, missed opportunities of actually playing the ball forward uh, are missed, and then we end up playing the ball backwards, and then we lose that forward momentum that we want to gain going forward, to make sure that we can put the opposition under pressure. Okay, so. So for us, uh, it's, impor it's important that uh, we, we train from a young age, okay, in terms of looking up. Look up, look up, look up, okay, because uh, we can then, st we then start to bring in, we then start to bring in uh, the players around us. I hope, I hope that's answered your, your, your question. So if I, if, I, if I look at it, yes, we want to keep a game as simple, simple as possible. Okay, uh, and by keeping it simple, it's it's basically. I mean, uh, hockey is a game of eleven versus eleven. Okay, with one ball, and I think the the team that keeps the ball the longest and uh, they don't uh, lose a ball, but are also going forward. Okay, generally generally create uh, a lot more go forward momentum. Okay, so it's important. But also, if you do lose the ball, it's important that you are able to regain the ball quickly to make sure that you can then move the ball and move your position to then go forward from there. I see there's another question that's come through. Uh, it says, how can players develop that positional sense and how to time the lead? Uh, I think the positional, the positional sense, if, if, I, if, I look, if I look at it from a, a, a striker perspective, uh, again, we talk about lead. So you, for me, when I look at it, it's you know hockey. Hockey is a is a running based sport, okay, and it's about uh, space creation, okay. So I think if you, I mean, if you, if you have it in your mindset, it is a running based sport, okay, and it's also about creating space. So if you're not going to create space and you're not going to lead or run, okay, I think as a as a striker, you probably not you you're probably not going to get the the best outcomes for yourself as an individual, but also you're not probably not going to get the best. Uh, comes for the team because again we, we speak about that trust okay we speak about trust in terms of leading okay leading uh we, 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 we talk about uh, creating space so we talk about uh, creating a problem for the defender okay and, and in order to create a problem for the defender there needs to be movement okay and these and, and these are key principles that as coaches we, we look at okay you might you might not be a prolific uh, goal scorer okay but it's important to look at your work rate okay on the ball, but also off the ball. Okay, and, and 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 for us, it's probably more off the ball. Okay, off the ball in terms of defensive, but also off the ball when we are going forward. Okay, what type what type of uh, passing options are you giving the team uh, to give us the best possible outcome in 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 the nine yard? So when we watch games, and uh, going back to this question, when we watch games, for us, it's important. That we see players leading, but leading with a purpose. Where you're trying to create the space? How you're trying to manipulate defenders? Are you leading from behind, or are you in front of defenders? And or do you lead in behind them, or do you start from behind and lead in front? Okay. Are there hook shape leads? Okay. Why are you doing a hook shape lead? Okay. To draw a defender out for for someone else who's in, who's 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 available. So all those principles for us are are key. 
in, ter in, ter in terms of in terms of development. Okay, and it's not only necessarily the strikers. Okay, because also uh, midfielders can also score in the in the in, in the nine yard in the D. So those principles are key for, across the board. Okay, I see another question that's come through. Uh, how do you train speed of thought? Okay, so if you look if if you look at what we've just looked at, uh, speed of thought, okay, speed of thought and speed of action is also based around the small side of games. So if you look at the circle and uh, what we've just gone through is small side of games, okay. So if you talk about uh, how do we teach this, we teach this in small side of games as well. So you can play three versus three in a small area and this is how we start to increase speed of thought because in a three versus three game, uh, there's a lot of touches. Okay, but there's also a lot of pressure. Okay, a lot of pressure in terms of passing the ball, but also a lot of pressure in receiving the ball. And how do I receive the ball? Do I receive open? Do I receive closed? What pressure's around me? Also, how do I uh, then make the, my next action? Okay, before the ball is dispossessed. Okay, so again, these principles come out in small sided games. Okay, so we base our training in terms of technical. So we'll do a technical session. Uh, we'll normally start it, we start the session with a 20 minute to half an hour technical session. Um, and then we'll go into a bit of a, a, a drill based scenario in terms of a theme or concept that we're working on, but we will always finish up on a small sided game. And that small sided game could be a three versus three with a progression into a four versus four. Okay. Or also a five versus four. So we play, sometimes we play numbers up, numbers down. Okay. So it's all about consistent ongoing, Decision making, okay, uh, and that's the only way. Uh, in, in my view, that's the only way that you start to increase, okay, the, the speed of thought, and 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 uh, the speed of the decision making. Okay, you need to be constantly under pressure, okay, and uh, and what type of, and what type of choices are you making under pressure, okay, and what type of uh, passes are you making under pressure? Are you completing your passes under pressure? Are you securing the ball under pressure? Okay, and that's how you start to improve. Uh, the speed of thought. Another question's come in uh, from what's it, uh, from another perspective. What are what are you hoping that the goalkeeper does does not do? So let me just try to rephrase this question again. So from the other perspective, what are you hoping the goalkeeper does not do? So I think if I if 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 I read your question uh, in terms in terms of the the nine yard play. So you normally, the goalkeepers are normally uh, trying to direct traffic. Okay. In terms, in, in terms of uh, the defenders marking. Uh, but I think if you start to create a little bit more movement in the nine yard, okay, it depends. Some goalkeepers might come out and some goal, goalkeepers might, might uh, like to stay on their, on their, on their defensive line per se. So it's important to and how you analyze that and you, and you, and you take notes. Again, it's about, Situational, uh, situational awareness, okay, of understanding what is a goalkeeper looking to do, uh, and then you need to then uh, obviously uh, use the appropriate skill to uh, to uh, to beat the to beat the goalkeeper. But again, that also comes back to my previous point in terms of small sided games, because now you start to increase the thought process and the speed, and the speed of action, and, and it's exactly the same in the nine yard. What is the goalkeeper looking to do? Because the goalkeeper is a defender. And if I'm an attacker in the nine yard and the goalkeeper rushes out, my speed of thought is maybe, hey, let me look to get around the goalkeeper, look to find another pass if there's a pass on on the far post, or I can go myself and finish. Okay, if the goalkeeper's tied to my, on, my, on my back, I can look to man, uh, manipulate the goalkeeper by arcing out. Okay, or if you seen, if you saw in the previous, uh, in the previous clips where the striker open, open, open face slap the ball. Uh, pass to the keeper's right shoulder. Again, it's just about situational awareness. I think the goalkeeper is going to come uh, come rushing out to try to close that space. So then I know I, I can play it. I can play it in that corner. Again, it, it, it boils down to also a lot of analysis work, understanding what uh, opposition you're playing against, understanding uh, your opposite defender, but also understanding what the goalkeeper likes doing in the nine yard. I think if the goalkeeper likes, if the goalkeeper stays on the stays on, on her goal line, I think you have a bit more time okay, to, uh, to execute your skill. If they, if, if, they, if they rush out, I think then obviously you have less time, but again, your speed of thought and your speed of action 
will determine your 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 next uh, your next uh, your next skill set or your next uh, uh, decision. So if I look at uh, there's another question that's come through. Uh, what's one What's one thing you've noticed in junior and junior level Canadian hockey compared to compared to your time in South Africa? Uh, yeah, it's quite a good question that, uh, and I uh, and I've actually done a little bit of uh, reflection on that, and I think uh, if I look at if I look at the junior level in terms of uh, we can look at both sort of the the psyche side, and then we can also look at the technical side. So I think from a from from a from a psyche or and from a mental perspective, uh, I think Canadians are are, are tough individuals, uh, and it's a never die attitude, uh, very loyal. If I look at it, uh, and then from a from a from a South African uh, perspective, we yeah, we we hard individuals, but there's times where we 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 can be a, a, a little bit soft per se. Uh, and if I look at if I look at from a technical perspective, I think uh, in South Africa we're a little bit a little bit uh, further ahead in terms of the of of, of the junior level because of uh, hockey hockey we play hockey in South Africa from the ages of uh, six, so we do mini hockey, okay, mini hockey where it starts, and then it goes up into into primary school, so that's sort of uh, U10s, U10s, U8s, uh, U11s, U12s, U13s are playing, uh, and then once they hit high school, which is university, which is high school, which is U14. Uh, uh, once they play U14, they play a bit of provincial, so they get selected for provincials. So they play U14, uh, they'll play U16 provincials, they'll have a U18 provincial. Uh, and then they'll have a, a U21 provincial, and then your university competition is also quite big. Uh, so I think field hockey is introduced quite early on, okay? But also field hockey is also a mass sport in in South Africa. So we most 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 of the the co-ed schools uh, play field hockey. Okay, it's 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 almost mandatory that uh, you play a summer you play a summer sport and a winter sport in South Africa. Uh, in South Africa, hockey is considered a, a winter sport, so we don't deal with a lot of snow. So for us, we we play we play a lot a lot, a lot of fixtures, uh, a lot of fixtures. So if you if you had to look at the competition structure per se in terms of schoolboy hockey or schoolgirl hockey, uh, in a season, uh, the top schools, or let's say the top the top twenty schools in in, uh, in South Africa, will play. Uh, an average, an average of about uh, 30, 30 to forty uh, fixtures, and that's proper matches. They play and they travel quite a bit, and then they have some uh, international tours as well. So, if you look at the skill level, uh, obviously hockey is a technical sport. And I think you need to develop those skill sets quite early on. Uh, if you don't, then you need to then increase or uh, you need to increase the level of training or the the, the amount of training to so try close that gap. Uh, but it is it is possible you can close a gap through uh, precise planning and uh, so it is. So if, so if going back to that, I think it's uh, yeah uh, the level at the moment. Uh, I think uh, something that we we aspire we aspire uh, as the next gen staff that we aspire to to raise to raise the skill level. Uh, not to say that there is no skill level, but there, we need to definitely close certain gaps in terms of us being uh, world beaters at a, at, a, at a junior at a junior level. I uh, see there's another question that's come through. Uh, most programs run for about 10 weeks, U16 to U18. A lot of players have a lot of different coaches and principals. What are your thoughts about it? Uh, yeah, I think, and again, going back to that question, uh, yeah, hockey is based around principles. And I think uh, for us as coaches, we need to look at trying to simplify this, this game of hockey. Uh, in terms of just the principles, and again, it's just about attacking and defending. Attacking, you know, going forward with the ball, uh, and then defending. How do we defend uh, one versus one? How do we defend two versus two, etc. But I think uh, if I if I look at this, if I try to elaborate a bit more on this on this on this uh, question of yours, I think I think as coaches, if I look at Canada, I think we can probably be a little bit more connected. Okay, in terms of uh, developing a little bit of a, a, a philosophy of how we want to play the game again, I think it's I think it's also part of my role coming in, uh, looking and assessing where we are from a junior perspective and uh, what are we looking to 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 develop and what is our goal, and I think what I would like to do is to try uh, to try uh, bring coaches in and uh, start to uh, investigate and start to develop these principles 
of, of hockey and, and, uh, and uh, trying to make sure that uh, we all kind of follow sort of the, the, same, uh, the same philosophy okay, in terms of the principles. But I don't want to say we all need to coach in, in a similar style because I think coaching, you, 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 you coach based on your, on your, on your, on your, on your uh, personal style. You have your personal style the way you coach and your personal philosophy. But I still think there are certain principles that are the same and that are never really going to change uh, hockey-wise. So, and again, these principles are based also on the current modern game, uh, where the game is at right now and where the game is looking to go in the next four to eight years. So it's important that we, 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 we kind of forecast, we kind of plan ahead in terms of where do we see this game going and what skill sets are needed for for us to make sure that we don't get left behind. Okay, I think I think that's how we should be looking at it, as opposed to looking at it as as a, as, as structure. And we need to play at this sort of structure. We look at principles, and then we can play through through the different structures that we set. But principles are key. I, I hope I hope that's answered your your question on that. Uh, just just from my side, I'd like to. Thank you very much uh, for, for tuning in and listening in. Uh, and you are more than welcome to, to contact me. I'm happy to, to share knowledge. Uh, and uh, that's part of my role. And I enjoy hockey. And, and I would like to share as much as possible. But uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please just uh, pop me a mail and, and I'll, I'll hopefully uh, reply. Thank you very much. Great, thanks so much, Patrick. Um, really appreciate it, obviously. I mean, really engaging and entertaining with the clips going in. Um, so I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed it and hopefully everyone was able to um, get something out of that. So great job. Great job, Patrick. Um, we're looking forward to uh, next week. We're bringing on men's national team manager, Celia Plotel to talk about uh, managing teams and some, maybe some stories from her touring with the men's national team. Um, just so everyone knows, we've got uh, the archives of these, so I'll be getting this up hopefully at the end of this week or at the beginning of next week. We'll get this video up so people can view it afterwards. Um, I'll send out a feedback form either tomorrow or at the beginning of next week as well, and feel free to uh, fill that out so we can try to improve and um, get better at these uh, webinar series. So thanks so much. We had almost 70 guests today, so that's so great. Um, have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend, and we'll see everyone next week.